Flask Tube, it's Jen, also known as Quirks and Stitches. It has been quite some time since you have gotten a typical um, Floss Tube video from me um, down in my basement. I think the last one I filmed was our October Marathon recap with my mom. Um, so I didn't get, um, I didn't get back on. I kept meaning to, but life just is life and then it didn't happen and then um I feel like if I don't have enough to show or enough to talk about I don't want to do it so it is Sunday November 24th and I'm sitting in my house with my coffee and I thought I was gonna get this done before Brandon and Watson were awake but I didn't so um they woke up early so I <clears throat> I do have Watson around and Mayhem is sitting in here as well. So that's what's happening here. Um, did not really look back to see what I had showed in the last one. I know, I think I showed you all of my like really dark October stitching that I was planning to do because I did that all during the marathon. Good morning, Watson. Um, so I think you saw all that. So I didn't pull all of that back out. Um, I have a couple new starts that I figured hi, it's Jen, um, that uh, I, I would show you. And then I'm focusing more on like November stitching. And I'll be honest, guys, my my mind is so set into planning for 2020 that I haven't wrapped my mind around finishing 2019. So I'm all kind of gung-ho about how I can be the most productive I can be next year. So <laughs> my productivity for this year has kind of... Um, you know, that's what happens. I, I think a lot of people are in 2020 planning mode. Um, some of you that are in, I'm going to really try not to talk too much about 24 hours of cross stitch because I feel like they are very separate things. Um, I, my stitching was motivated by the acrostics. So you will see that, um, kind of come in and I am in the works trying to, to figure out a 2020 planner that, will hopefully be out for the it's it's going to have all the materials for 24 hours of cross stitch um and i'll talk in a separate video about how that's going to impact the the free things that go on to the website or on yeah the website and the facebook group um those still will be available so don't like freak out and be like oh my gosh um but i really wanted to create something that for those of you that are like me that want to be able to plan like accordingly all year long, you're not waiting for me um, to release things and you've got some, you know, extra spots to kind of organize your thoughts. So I've been in full like planning mode for that because entering November, I really wanted to stitch a ton and I was really hoping for some big finishes. Oh my God, my dog is annoying. Um... She's growly too. Like this is what she does when she plays with her toy. You're going to get full on Watson play mode. Please bear with me. <laughs> she knew I was going to take her toy away when I said that. So she is now cozy in her bed. <laughs> so we'll hope that that lasts. Um, she has this one toy she got from her bark box that is like a, it looks like a Pokemon to me. Like it look, it reminds me of Pikachu and it's the funniest thing, but she, she is adamantly trying to destroy it because normally if things are cloth. She, she may only be 20 pounds, but <laughs> she's ferocious. Um, where was I? This is what's hard about filming. Um, November, I really planned to just try to stitch and get as many big finishes as I could. Um, I was <laughs> like 50,000 stitches for Nano Stitch Mo. I can do it. Do you guys know how many stitches 50,000 stitches is? I gave up like on the 15th or something. I stopped counting. I did accomplish a lot though, but I definitely got distracted because I was like, I just want to, I want to know that I'm going to be able to have a place to put what I'm stitching for 2020. So that's in the works. Um, it's definitely, uh, it, it's created like my mind works. So <laughs> if your mind doesn't work like mine, sorry. Um, but uh, there will be more about that, but that's been a big thing that's kind of been taking away my stitching time, which there are people that are like, well, if you didn't do so much of that, you would get more stitching done. I actually think though, I, I feel like I would not enjoy my stitching as much as if it was, if it was not organized. So I, I do think that I'm okay with the fact that it needs to be that way. 
So if you see behind me my whip wall, I do have some holes. Uh, I went through last night and just pulled off the ones that I know that I finished. And the rest of the month and the, into December, I have a few new starts planned and I'll talk about those. Um, but I think I'm just going to be gearing to try to finish as many of my little things um, that I started as I can. Those of you that know, know me, I'm typically a big project stitcher, or at least a medium to a large project stitcher. I did a lot of minis and smalls this year, and I'm, I'm really glad I did because it kind of showed me the value of doing them because I think sometimes I would look at them and be like well that can be done in an hour I, I will just knock it out at some point and I've realized hey no it probably can't be done in an hour um, because I think I'm a pretty quick stitcher and 24 hours to take one showed that pretty clearly um, but B I think that there's just there's a place for those and I want to have my house full I want a Christmas tree full of stitch Christmas ornaments but if I'm only ever starting huge things I'm never gonna get that to happen so um, I'm really glad that I started as many mini and smalls as I did I'm being said I'm trying to finish them all before the end of the year so I'm not entering the year with quite so many whips the last time I actually totaled I had finished 69 projects for the year and I still had 80 whips on my kind of rotation um, the ones behind me are my big ones and then the like the smalls that I started for mania they're not up there they're somewhere else but I don't I couldn't find them last night so I'm not sure where they are um so that's kind of my my plan I am thinking my next like full video I'm thinking once a month is really where my head needs to be um I, I'm hoping to come on and do like another video that will recap what we're really thinking with this 2020 planner as soon as it's ready to be released um which I'm hoping early December so those of you that are waiting it will definitely give you some time before January starts that you can gather your thoughts get it printed do all those sorts of things um my biggest thing is I have never produced something to try to offer of this Caliber? I don't know if that's the right word. It's like 80 pages long right now. So there's a lot of stuff that's going to be going into it. So um, again, just how my mind works, trying to give you a spot and me a spot that I can work my thoughts out. So what have I been stitching? I'm not going to do a whole lot of the, I said I wasn't going to do a whole lot and it's almost seven minutes in and I have a piece of stitching out. I hate mugs that aren't on two sides because I like to drink my mug like this. I like it in my right hand, but then you're seeing a blank blue mug. So I have to turn it around and then you can see my fox. Um, Brandon and I went to Cincinnati for our anniversary. So this is October. I don't know where the stuff I bought it since the keepsakes is, um, but Kia and Nathan, um, Kia and the Kia B and uh, Tech Guy in the Hive, they were at keepsakes doing a stitch in day and we figured, hey, it's our anniversary. We need to have a night away. So let's go to Cincinnati. Brandon's never been there. <clears throat> We can see our friends and, um, you know, go to keepsakes. So, so that's what we ended up doing. So we took off um, that Friday and went down and no, Saturday. We went down Saturday morning and um, it was so nice. So we, we weren't there for a ton of time, but he was able to see the store. We stitched for a little bit. Um, Sue Hillis was there. Steph was there. Pam, we missed you. Um, and, you know, a whole bunch of people. And I met a bunch from the Cincinnati crew. Spooner Rooney Stitcher was there. Um, just, you know, it was keepsakes. So Barb was there. Like, everybody was there. So it was fun to just kind of be able to, to sit and stitch. And I did pick up a pattern or two. I didn't go nuts because I'm really trying to hone in the spending. I think I might do Stitch from Stash again next year. Um, I am. I'm curious to see <laughs> how the mind of Jen works. I did not participate in Stitch from Stash this year. I did the year before until like, I did like half the year, I think. Um, I'm curious to see how much spending money I would have gotten from my finishes. 69 finishes is pretty hefty, even with the little smalls. So I feel like I'm curious and I may, I may <laughs> go back and just calculate just so I know. Um, but I haven't decided. So we went to keepsakes on our anniversary rambling mind of Jen. It does feel good to do this again, guys. I need to not put it off for quite so long. And, um, 
it was just a good time. Uh, we ended up, we went to Jungle Gyms and got all of the um, international candy. I got some coffee crisps and a bunch of Kit Kats that are weird flavors. Um, and just kind of had a nice getaway. We found a board game. We, we went home by a Columbus, I think. And so we ended up finding a board game cafe and it was just, that was our anniversary. So, um, when we got home on that Sunday, it was high tea. And so I wanted to do a high tea start and I'm trying to balance now because my plan for high tea going forward and always has a plan is I'm going to continue to start new things for high tea on the months that I haven't. So January, no, December, January, February, I started one in March. There was one month throughout the whole mix of things that I missed. So I'll do a new start that month, but the rest of them, I'm going to, to work on the project that I started for that on high tea to celebrate. And, um, it's not like that's the only time I'm going to work on it, but, um, I'm going to do that. I think I started to talk about my plan for my next video, but I'm going to come back to that at the end because I'm ready to show you some stitching. And for those of you that really don't care about Jen's plans and things, you don't have to watch it. So Sunday, October 27th was high tea. And, um, wanted to start something that kind of commemorated our anniversary and things like that. So I picked up, I picked out, I had this in my stash, Lindy Stitches Star Sprite. I love this piece. I am a crocheter as well. Um, I do like to crochet. I'm going to sneeze. So maybe not. Um, and I love birds. I don't really love birds. Like in, in real life, I don't love birds, but I have a bird tattoo on my shoulder and I stitch a lot of birds. So I, I I'm drawn to this piece, but it says we would be together and have our books and it might be warm in our bed together with the window open and the stars bright. I'm going to change, which is a quote by Hemingway. Yeah. Hemingway. Um, I'm going to change books to games because it suits Brandon and I more. So I meant to pull the color fabric I got, but I did not pull the thing. It is something my picture this plus, and it is a colorway that is not typical to me, um, but I'm really happy with it. I am doing a conversion for the granny squares. So I'm using just stuff that I had in my stash and then um, the birds and stuff I got the actual, what it's called for. It's really nice on this pattern because she breaks down um, on the back, what's used for what. So you don't have to, thank you, Lindy. Like, or it's Stephanie. Thank you. Like it just made it so nice to know that, oh, I don't need to get this, but I do want to get the stuff for the birds. So thank you. Um, I got a small start on this and got some of the granny squares started. So this is, I feel like it's like tarnish. It's like a turquoisey kind of, um, cause it's on like a mint and I wanted a little darker. Um, for me and my color scheme, but I'm really happy with how it's going. It's a 36 count. Let me see if I have it written down what it is. Give me a second. It's really unnerving to me when I can't see myself on the camera because my computer screen is being full of the program I'm trying to pull up right now. Let's see. I think it's Fathom. I have question marks down, but I think it's 36 count fathom. Um, and again, just using like a random collection, I am going to try to keep the, like the spacing of the colors the same on the granny squares. So I am trying to do a symbol for symbol conversion. Um, but yeah, I'm really happy with it so far. So I'm looking forward to pulling it back out. So that was my October high tea start. And then on Halloween, Danielle, Curvy Stitcher, and I had said we were going to sell um, Amos Fig by Plum Street. All the glare, sorry. Um, had this for a while, love, love, love it. And um, yeah, wanted to get it started. So I had a piece of 40 count pearled barley. Um, I was originally going to do it like really small. And because I have Halloweenies and Jack Spash started on small things, I decided I didn't want another like Halloween ones that were going to be really little. And I had enough of the pearled barley to do this and Tilly. So I just cut pieces for both. So I am doing a conversion for it. I'm not using the colors that are called for. Um, but this was my start on Amos Fig. If anybody is um, wanting to follow it on Instagram, it is using the return to dust out hashtag. Um, and you feel free to join in if you would like. I'm doing a conversion. The black base is going to be 
Raven because I felt like it should be a little greeny. I'm also using Garden Gate and Wood Trail and I picked out a um, just brick by Weeks Dye Works to try to like highlight a little bit. I wanted it very dark and dark. So then, so that was my the rest of my October. I know. And then I finished a bunch of my little smalls for um, that I started during Mania um, that were October themed. So I'll show those again. Uh, I'll talk about when I'm going to show those later. Before I get into November, though, we're going we're gonna to do this one in segments. I need to write down my plans for doing these things. I'm going to show you um, some happy mail that I got because this community just blows me away every time. So, um, and it's, this one is Halloween themed, so we're going to do that. So, um... Tracy, she had mentioned, had been, I think she joined in on one of our Stitch With Me YouTubes. So, side note, Brandon is filming on YouTube as well. I will link his channel below. And um, we are doing sometimes Stitch With Me videos over on his channel. Um, we're working out a system because I... <laughs> I'm very grumpy on Wednesdays when I come home from work. And so... It, it, and so then I have to sit in a place that I'm not comfortable and like try to angle my stitching in a way that isn't happy for me. And so it just makes me extra grumpy. So I feel like I'm portraying this person that I'm, I'm only sort of when I film those things. So we are working on finding a time that maybe will be more conducive. And also that, um, maybe we can figure out how to rig it that we can stitch in our stitching spots instead of having to sit in the office because I'm just not comfortable at all. And then I'm just like, I just want to go. I just want to be done. And then that's not very friendly. So, um, but she had joined in and she told me what she was stitching, which she was stitching this boo to you by Brenda Gervais. And I was like, Oh, I love that. And she's like, well, I'll send it to you when I'm done. So thank you so much, Tracy. Um, she also sent over some like zipper pools that have, um, Brandon, my mom, and me's initials. So we'll, we will be putting those on project bags for sure. So thank you so much. Um, so that one came in October. That was mayhem. Um, I have some other stitchy mail, but I'm going to, I'm just going to go back and forth with this one. So the beginning of November, I was really hardcore into stitching. Oh, I'll show one other October thing. Has anybody seen this pattern? Because holy crap. Um, I could not believe it when I saw it. And we got it on Etsy, which is why it's not like it looks like it's a printable because it was. There is a witch w riding a whale. And it is, could this be more, Jen? I don't, I don't think it could. So I, um, my mom picked this up for me. Because it's a witch riding a whale. Not Forgotten Farms. Available on Etsy. If you have any of my things that you like to stitch. I don't know where to put things. I'm putting it over there. Um, so that brings us to November, which there is a little bit of Halloween stitching in here, but I really wanted to try to get a bunch of stuff done on my acrostic. So the acrostic for the month was rewind time because of daylight savings time. My throat's a little sore. Um, and so I started... And I was, you know, I usually go for the 1200 stitches, but go, October, I didn't count stitches at all. And I really liked that not counting stitches thing. So I liked it and I didn't like it because I really do like having a measurable information about how much I stitched, even though I do nothing with that information. Um, so I really, I really do like having that, but I feel like it takes time away from my stitching. So I got into November thinking I was trying to track 50,000 stitches, which is a lot, and got a little burned from it again. But I, I really enjoyed it when I was doing the acrostic. So I think going forward, I don't know when, I don't know if I'm going to count every stitch I do in 2020. I think part of it is I'm not going to have a full, like, reasonable record for 2019 with stitch counting because... Some months I did, some months I didn't, you know, I didn't start counting stitches until I joined Magical Stitches in April. So there were, you know, three months before that, that I didn't count any stitches. 
And then like October, I didn't get any. So like, I feel like it's not giving a good representation. So I'm thinking I may get back into it totally 2020 because then I can be like, this year I can I stitch this many stitches all year long. Anyway, I counted my stitches for the acrostic. My goal was either a finish or 1200 stitches on all of them. Um, and I, I did that. So uh, I pulled out Raven Bewitched for R because of Raven. This is Blackbird Designs. And I started this during the 24 hours of cross stitch, um, dark October stitching event. I am stitching this on 40 count flagstone, I think. So I got a bunch of the Quaker stars done. Um, got about just over 1200 stitches on this. 1202 to be exact. Um, I really like it. I really like the colors a lot. A couple of the colors, uh, it's all gassed and they were hard to find because anybody else having that trouble? Gentle Arts, please dye some of these colors that I love. Please. Um, N was Nevermore by Lila's Studio because of Edgar Allan Poe. E. Because it was not N. Because rewind time does not go R-N. It goes R-E. And so this was E for <laughs> Edgar Allan Poe. This one I started during Stitch Madness this year. I do not remember the fabric. It is some, it's a 36 count navy bean, I think. Don't quote me, but I'm pretty sure it's 36 count navy bean. I took this with me when I went to Keepsakes and was stitching on it. Really like it. It was hard to put down. It was actually really hard to put down. I'm really, really enjoying it. W, I pulled out Quaker Fox. There's a lot of glare. I'm sorry. We got a ring light. And so i um, trying to find the placement. And I don't, because I use uh, working copies, I don't ever take these out of their things. So you're going to get the glare. Deal with it. Um, Quaker Fox. This was the last of my Stitch 9 projects, and I knew I didn't have 1,200 stitches left on it, but I decided I wanted to just shoot for a finish. So I started this in 2018 Stitch Madness, and I started it on this huge piece of flax, um, 28 count flax. And I was like, he just, he needs to be little. He needs to be small. I, I don't love him big. Um, so I wasn't happy with him. So when I was at, but I put him on my Stitch 9 challenge. So I knew I had to finish him. So I, when I was at StitchCon, I decided I would restart him on something smaller. And so I had a scrap of Days Gone By from Silk Weaver that I'm using for Life After Death. And decided he would be perfect on that. And he really is. It's a really tight fit. He's going to be finished as a um, pillow of some sort, like a standing pillow, I think. I'd like him on my desk at work. Um, isn't he just like, the, I just, he is just, I love him. And um, yeah, it only took about 534. I say about, I have the exact number written down. I'm not sure why I say about. Um, 534 stitches to finish him, but he is done. And he's adorable. So that also completed my Stitch 9 challenge. So I'm very happy that I was able to get that done. My eyes are a mess today. We had our fan. We tried to dust it last night. Because <laughs> I was grumpy. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Um, because I felt like I wasn't breathing well at night because there was too much dust on it. And so Brandon was dusting it off and he accidentally stuck something inside it while it was running and it like exploded dust. I have never seen such a cloud of dust, but I feel like my eyes are still like, uh, I slept a lot better last night though. So that was good. Um, I was good intentions by Kathy Barrick. I started this during a marathon. I don't remember what one. Four? Have we done five? I think we've done five. I think this might have been during Marathon 4. I am doing this as a conversion. I did not, um, I just pulled colors that I felt like 
like worked with it um, that I had in my stash. So I know the black is Raven. I don't remember what all the other ones are. I can get you a list if you would like them. The only one I have not settled in on is the skin color. I don't feel like I have anything, so I may actually get the NPI that's called for. Um, next time I'm at Craft Gallery, perhaps. So I feel like I got a lot on done on this one. I put about, about see, I keep saying it. I put uh, 1,238 stitches in on it. Um, and honestly, I feel like I'm giving myself a really good start of things I can reasonably finish in 2020, which is exciting that since I'm not going to be having so many little smalls, I think I'm still going to come away with a lot of finishes. Um, I don't remember the fabric. I should have looked these things up. I believe it's 40 count something. I don't know if you guys really care about what the fabrics are. I can actually find it out. It is this was harder to find out than I thought it would be. It is navy bean. 40 count navy bean. Yep. Then for N I worked on Hollow Game Board by the Primitive Needle for N for Needle. Um I got thirteen 153 stitches done on this, but I have since put more in. I am stitching this on called for with called for threads. Um, this is 40 count autumn gold, vintage autumn gold, autumn gold, something like that by Lakeside. Um, I know it's a huge piece, but I wanted to just have the straight line to guide me. So I figured I might as well just stitch it all on that. So I got, I only had like a little bit up here done because I started it during the 31 hours for, um, the marathon and um i've gotten a bunch done on it now i like it it's kind of just like a mindless stitching this may be when we're doing um our stitching stitch with me videos i may just have one project that i focus on so it's getting some significant progress i haven't decided don't hold me to it because you know i say these things and then i change my mind uh life after death was d d for death long dog favorite could also be you for dog. Started this for, this was my March start for high tea and was also um, Stitch Madness 2019 piece. I'm stitching this with storm clouds. You can't see, it doesn't even give you a close to what the color is. Um, it's just beautiful because it, it's got like greens and stuff in it and it's just, I love it. Um, so I worked predominantly on this section down here. Um, love, love, love it. But when I say that gentle arts needs to start dying again, because I can't, I couldn't find any storm clouds at craft gallery. I haven't looked further than that because I like that they're the 10 yard skeins. And, um, I only bought three <laughs> and, and I'm almost through my first skein. And I'm like, there is more than that is not a third of the piece. So I need to get some more. I really thought I bought more than that, but apparently I did not. Oops. More coffee. <coughs> tea was Penny Harvest by Tree Tea, Tree of Life Samplings. This one I started during, um, I have a lot of navy bean with this stuff. I'm pretty sure that's navy bean too. Um, I started this during 2019 Stitch Madness. And I have the Halloween one of these, but I don't want to start it until this one's done because I have this thing about trying to not start similar projects. Um, so I got a fair amount done on him. this. I am using, again, I believe this is Navy Bean. I believe it's 36 count. Um, I am using just the DMCs with this. And I have not decided... There's a whole bunch of like words that are in our one over one. And it's not that the one over one doesn't intimidate me to do them. I'm just not sure I love them. So I'm, I'm going to wait until I'm done to decide if I want those words there. So I don't think I do. I've gotten a lot more comfortable um, this past year changing things that I don't really like or that don't suit me as a person. So, um, yeah, I like them. I get cracking ink circles. Started this for Stitch Madness 2019. This is on Sand Dune or Vintage Sand Dune. Um, 
I am using the DMC. I am very happy with the DMC conversion. I don't remember what I worked on. I worked on like the bottom on the boat. I got the other, the second half of the boat done and I put in 1,298 stitches. Then we came to M and M this was my reason that November kind of fell apart other than I got distracted. Map of Hawkman Hollow. I started this um, for Madness 2018. It was my first Madness start. Um, and I have learned so much about my stitching style since I started this that I go back and forth because sometimes I think, oh, if I would have known, you know, I shouldn't have started this. I should, should restart it. That's going to be more my stitching style. And maybe if I didn't start a thousand things at once, I would realize that what my stitching style is and I wouldn't start so many things that then I need to go back and restitch. Right. But I also wouldn't realize these things about my stitching style if I hadn't mass started things. Does that make sense? I think it does. It does in my head. Um, I am not a person that likes to stitch on 32 count. It's just too big for me. I don't love stitching with two strands. I really enjoy 36 and 40 or smaller. Um, 36, 40 is like my, my spot that I like to be. Um, I really like the coverage of one strand on 36 count. Um, so I, I've learned that about myself. Well, I started this piece on 32 count. And it's huge. And I'm using a, just a regular, it's not, it's not Lakeside. I think it's just Zweigart, um, light mocha. And it's not fabric I love. Um, it's not, I'm using the DMC. I was at Craft Gallery for their stitching day and Don is working on this and he is using the silks and I'm very jealous. Um, not necessarily, I, I, I still hesitate with buying all of the silks, but I do feel like the colors were truer to the pattern. Um, that being said, I work on it and I do like it. So it, it is like, you know, I saw Abby do hers and hers, it's, her conversion was gorgeous. Um, and I go back and forth because I think this looks nice. Like I, it's not that I don't think it looks nice. I do. Um, and I think it shows what you can get with DMC because I, I think DMC is fantastic and I will always utilize DMC in my stitching. Um, but some of the colors I wish I would have changed and I wish I would have done it on smaller fabric. Also, because I stitched, um, it's right there. Fall at Hawk Run Hollow on 40 count. This feels huge. Um, it's a much smaller of the Hawk Run Hollows though. So like, it's not, I think if I have them all done, it's not going to like be overwhelming. Anyway, I really wanted for November to get this finished because I really thought not just for November, but in 2019, I've, I've had a lot of finishes, but I haven't had any from the big ass project category size category. Um, and so I was like, this one is like just barely making it to big ass project in my, my book, but, um, it's a lot of stitching. So I was like, oh, I can do that. Well, I ended up, I, I ran out of colors, like the color for the water I'm running out of, um, the color to fill all of the, this, I think it's 613 I'm, I'm running out of. And like this one, and this one are two different skeins and you can tell the difference. Um, but I figured I did it purposely. Like I did all of this one with its skein. I finished all of that one with that skein and then Orchard Road and Opal's Boarding House are with the other skein. So it's like, who cares? Like they're not, it's not in the same block that you can tell that it's different. I'm nervous about the water um, because I just, I don't have any more in my stash and I don't know. So I was like, do I try to get all the way down with the one skein and then do like the bottom portion of the water with the other. I don't know. Um, but I, I got a lot done on it. So I'm happy with that. Um, it's just, I've learned a lot about my stitching through this piece, which is good. And I'm, I'm glad I did. And I think I will like it when it is all done and hanging. Um, I also, I'm, I'm just really self-conscious about stitching with two st strands cause I don't railroad. Um, and for the most part, they're, they're neat and I don't feel like they are twisted, but I've tried to start railroading and it's just, I don't know. Do people railroad in hand? I don't know. It changes my whole stitching style and I don't love it. So, M. 
Um, then I worked on E was his eyes on the sparrow. Um, I started this with my mom in 2017. I think 2017. I think it was October 2017. Um, have you guys seen Ellen's progress on this? Holy crap. I mean, she just started it and she's like going to finish it before December, before 29th. I don't understand. I mean, I guess if you're only working on one thing. I am impressed though, Ellen. This is more I am. And I know my fabric is way too big. It's not going to be that big. It's going to be close, but it's not going to be quite that big. I'm stitching this on a 36 count uh, buttercream by Lakeside Linens, and I'm using the called for colors. My mom and I started this, like I said, together. She is using um, DMC and doing it on 40 count. Can we talk a minute about this bird, though? I've seen so many of these done, and everybody's bird looks blue. My bird is green because the fat, the color that I'm using that it's called for is green. Did everybody just change it to be a blue? I don't understand why my bird is green. Birds aren't supposed to be green. And I had this whole contemplation about changing it, but then I was like, I don't really care if the bird is green. Except that I'm going to complain about it right now and ask what you guys all did. His eyes on the sparrow. Um, so that's, that's what I did for November. Um, like I said, I, I spent a lot of time working on, um, Map of Hawk Run, so I, I got a lot of stitching done on that one, but I'm done with it for now. I'm putting it away. Um, and I'm working on smalls. So I have finished several of my Mania 50 that I started. Um, they're all like Christmas, so it feels like the right time of the year to be stitching them. Um, yeah. Plans going forward. What does December look like for me? December is going to be pretty much, I think, the same. I'm going to be focusing on those finishes. Uh, today is high tea. Um, so before we get to December, let's finish November, right? Because I haven't even done that yet. So high tea this month is going to be a little bit different than a typical high tea because I am going to do a restart, which I say that I've done that one month before. So I started Be Thankful by Cross-Eyed Cricket. Um, for Madness, and I started it on a piece of 35 count Confederate gray. Um, and I, by weeks that works, I go back and forth. I really, really want to try their new dye on Zweigart because the base of these I don't love, but I usually love Confederate gray. So I got a bunch and I heard that if you use two strands, um, the coverage was better. So I was going to do that. Well, I don't enjoy it. Um, I just, I don't, I don't enjoy it. So I'm restarting it. So I am going to continue with the DMCs. I think it's charted in. It's charted in DMC. Um, and when I was at Craft Gallery on Thursday, my mom and I picked up this piece of, it's just a raw, raw natural linen, so I got it, but it's 46 count. Um, because I really wanted this to be done tiny. Um, my mom has it done and she has it done big. And so I was like, it's neat. Like I like it when her and I stitch the same things, um, to have them be different. So she's had it up for years and I've had it in my stash to stitch. Um, so this is going to be my high tea start later. So that's November, which doesn't add to my whip rotation. doesn't add any projects because it's just a restart. Um, I keep going back and forth because I keep wanting to say if anybody loves stitching on, on weeks and wants to finish this, I will send it. But I feel like my stitches look a mess. Uh, so I'm hesitating. I just couldn't get them to lay right, so the whole house is a mess. So I think this one's just got to get scrapped. I don't know. Anyway, um, I am restarting it and deciding what I'm doing with the old one. So that's high tea today. Um, I The other happy mail that I got... Guys. Have you seen Diana stitching this? It is kismet. Gorgeous. And I've, I've been in love and it was an exclusive club kit. So I was like out of luck. Um, and I mentioned on Diana's that I loved it and wanted to stitch it someday. And Yvette was like, I'll send it to you. So I'll link her Instagram below. Uh, and I was like, are you kidding me? So she I was like, are you sure? And she's like, yes, I, I'll send it to you. And I thought she was going to send me the pattern. Guys, she sent me the whole kit. Like she sent me all the fabric, the fed called for fabric, the floss that came with it, the kit. I, what? And then, Yvette, if you're watching, yesterday they were, 
Kathy Barrick released that she was going to sell this pattern now, and it was not going to be the exclusive because the time, you know, after a certain amount of time, the, the club exclusives you can buy. So she's releasing it to sell. So Yvette, if you want this back, I will send it back to you and I will buy the kit or the pattern um, because thank you. But now that um, timing, really. Um, so I'm so excited to stitch this. I love that bird and that house and everything. And Diana's just made it pop. So definitely so excited. And thank you, Yvette, so much for sending this over. I just, the timing cracked me up. Um, Thursday, we went to craft gallery and I met my mom there after work. My dad dropped her off so that then when we went home, we just had the one car and, um, she texted me and she's like, there's people here that want to meet you. And I was like, oh, okay, I'm on my way. And, oh, my goodness, what a fun time Thursday was. Um, Debbie was there, and Debbie just recently moved to Cincinnati. She made my year, month, day, everything. Like, guys, I'm so out of my comfort zone when I, like, m like this this I can do because it's just, like, me talking to myself. Like, I, I'm not intimidated. I thought I would be originally, but, like, it's just me having a conversation get me around people in real life. And I'm like, Oh, God, I'm an introvert. What do I do? How do I talk to people? I don't small talk. Like, I don't know how to do that. Um, she made me feel so comfortable, like to, to be able to talk to her and um, just hear about her stitching and her style and what things she's, you know, taken away from the things that I do and the planning and the whip wall and like that kind of stuff was just so much fun. It was the funnest 10 minutes that we had she was because I came in and she was leaving they were just checking out so um it was her and Lynn and other people that I met that I'm blanking on names at keepsakes when I was down there um and it was just there was um one of the the people that was there is a brand new stitcher and she was buying all of the the good things <laughs> so it was so much fun um Debbie I loved being able to chat with you and talk and um, hi to your friends in New York. So um, that that just made my day. So when I was there, Emily had um, eclectic possessions and Jesse Marie started um, a project. And I was like, I'm pretty sure that's the original that's hanging in craft gallery um, that I've wanted to stitch for forever and was toying with telling Brandon that I wanted him to kit it up for me this year. And it would be my new year, new start. But that got changed because, you know. Any, thank you. Um, but I did pick it up. So, um, Leah Grinnell, Grinnell, I don't say words right. Um, I, I was standing at craft gallery, like, I don't know, a few weeks ago, last month, I don't know, sometime talking to my mom about this because the saying in the middle says, teach me to live that I may dread the grave as little as my bed. Teach me to die that so I may rise glorious at that awful day. I love that there are words like dread and grave and die and awful, but it's this happy sentiment. Like it makes me like my pessimistic being is so happy reading this because it's like, it's a good saying, but it's said like so negatively. And I was cracking up because I love it. Um, so I picked it up to do. I don't know when I'm going to start it, but it's now in my stash because it's just fantastic so pessimistic I love it I love it I love it um I also picked up because because I don't know when I'm gonna start this I really would love to tomorrow but I'm not going to because I am gonna try to reasonably finish some things um so brings me to 2020 before the year is out what I'm gonna do is my next video my next like full length full video or something my plan, end of December, beginning of January video, is I want to recap all of my stitching this year. So um, I know I've showed a lot of it, um, but I want to go through and I'm going to just show it all. So I, it's going to be a long one. There's going to be a lot of, um, it's going to be a whip finish parade of all sorts. So my plan is to start um, with showing the things that I went into 2020 with, or no, 2019 with. So anything that I had started pre 20. 19. I will show those. Some of them are finished. Some of them are not. Some of them haven't been touched. Most of them have. Um, and then I'm going to go through the year and go through my starts. So we'll go through my 24 hours. Take one, those 24 starts. I think 20, 20 of them are finished or abandoned. 
Um, then we're going to go through March Madness, Stitch Madness, and those starts and go through and, and just so I have a way to kind of visualize what I've stitched um, and what I finished and what I'm going into 2020 with. So that is my plan for my next video. It's going to be a doozy and I'm going to try to get as much of it ironed and straightened because the other thing is, and the reason this really kind of works is I want pictures of all of my whips going into 2020. So, um, as I prep them, I'll picture them and then get them stacked to be able to show you guys. Cause this has been a crazy stitching year. Like it has been so filled with stitching. It just a lot. Um, I think I said I was going to talk more about my planner, but I don't remember what I was going to say. Um, I think it was just that I wanted to tell you what I, my plan is for the next video. But you know how well, once I say a plan, how well it actually happens. Um, I have two finishes to show. I'm just trying to think if I have anything else before I get carried away. Um, I am finishing up the planner. Hope to have it released early December. Um, it will be a printable file. It will not be something that I'm going to produce and sell that way. So, um, and like I said, things that have already been available will continue to be available. We will talk about it. And I will have a separate kind of walkthrough about what I'm thinking about that. Um, I hope you guys are interested in this. I don't know if you are. I mean, even if you aren't, I, I'm, I'm, I will use it. So um, I'm going to continue to work on that to get that done. Um, only other housekeeping from 24 hours is my mom and I had toyed with the idea of doing a mini marathon in December um, because we know we've been doing every other month. And honestly, I, I am so tired and busy and all of those things that it just, it was too much to try to figure out a specific date. Um, I think because we, we ended up doing the, the marathon in November with Brandon too, it, um, Thank you to all of you that participated in that one, by the way. Um, it just, it doesn't feel like we had an off month. Um, and I know it wasn't like an official one or anything like that, but um, we are going to go into 2020 strong and have those dates released and things like that. So we are not planning an official mini marathon or anything like that. There have been so many Christmas um, events that have popped up in all of the other groups that I hope you guys understand. Um, so I am just kind of trying to get as much done as I can um, to go into 2020 reasonably ready to accomplish some things. So I have two fully finished projects that I figured I would show you. This was one of my stitch nine challenges. Um, it was from an ep edition episode. I always say episode, um, a just cross stitch. No cross stitcher magazine. Um, I can, I will get the date and link it below. Uh, I collect clocks and so I wanted this done for on my clock wall and I just I love it I love the frame it's got like hints of red in it it's hard to see um that kind of pop out the the red in the clocks um I started this years and years ago so it was a it was a doozy on <laughs> some really old scrap fabric that was really hard to stretch and frame for my mom but she did a really good job I really like it um so that was one of my finishes and then this one was also a stitch nine challenge that we got framed well my mom framed oh, almost had it up ready for Halloween not that I hung up any of my stitching but this frame is just like oh, I love it I love it um another one that was really hard for my mom to stretch because it was done on weeks confederate gray and just weeks is very loose and so but she I, I mean, I'm glad I stitched on that. I love it on this fabric. Um, yeah, I really like it. So those were my um, fully finished things. And yeah, so that's been my my time. I'm sorry it has been so long in between. Not really. I, I don't know. I, I try not to apologize, but I do like to get on and connect with you guys and it helps me focus myself. And so I, um, I don't like it when it goes so long. So I'm hoping that I will get into something a little more regular. I don't think weekly is in the cards for me though. I just don't think I have enough to talk about or have, I can talk. <laughs> 
let's be honest, Jen can always talk, but um, I feel like I wouldn't have enough to show or like that it wouldn't feel like it was just follow me on Instagram for that stuff because I post constantly on Instagram. Um, I was thinking that because like when I met the group at, uh, at, Ke at Craft Gallery um, from Cincinnati, I immediately was like, what's your Instagram handles? Because that's my preferred method of social media. Like I like the pictures. I like the tracking. I like the immediacy of being able to sort by a hashtag. I like it just makes my head work like happy. Um, and I realized that not everybody else is like that. <laughs> so I'm like, sorry, Debbie, for invading your personal Instagram. Um, so, I, you know, but that's just how I am. I had like four Instagrams because I had, well, I used to. I had one for when I was really good about losing weight, which obviously didn't last very long. Um, that's the other thing that's happening next year, getting back into figuring out how I'm eating. Um, this year has been a very, it's been, it's been interesting reflecting on this year because it was a very difficult year for me. Um, there were a lot of changes. There were a lot of things that didn't happen the way I envisioned. Um, you know, we moved, we, I had change of jobs. I had, there was just a lot that happened. Um, but the best thing that has come out of this year is this community for me. Like you guys have helped me through. You've been my constant, um, you know, I was talking to my mom about Paul and Carlton at uh, Craft Gallery, like the amount of influence they have put into my life. Like, I can't even stress it. Like, it's not it's not just that I enjoy the store. They make it like I love being able to go there and just know that they're there. Like, it's just having that as a, a place that that I identify with is has helped me for this year. Like, I started crying when I was talking to my mom about it the other day. Um that was the other thing. January 1st, I uh, bit the bullet and Diana and Amy are starting the Quaker Seasons of Friendship sale for January 1st. And I was not going to, um, I was not going to start anything, new, um, you know, because 2020 is all about the finishes for me. I'm doing my, I will be releasing in the 24 hour group, the ABC challenge, um, where I'm challenging you to finish either 24 or 12 projects related to letters in the alphabet. Uh, I have my alphabet all mapped out and I'm hoping for some big finishes and some little finishes and like not smalls, like, like some smalls, maybe I don't, probably not smalls for me, but, um, I have it planned with all the things that I want to finish for the year. So I'm hoping for probably 26 at least of those to get done, but biggies, like his eyes on the sparrows on my list. So I'm really gearing for a, a full year of stitching in 2020. Um, so I was like, I'm not going to start any more big ass projects. I was talking to my mom. I was like, I want to get them down to having 12. Well, then I counted and I only have 13. So <laughs> I was like, wow. I mean, I wanted to get it down from 12. I thought I was going to have like 20. Um, so I was, I was feeling okay with that. So I decided that I'm going to start it. So if you are interested in that, um, dying to stitch in Virginia beach, I don't have my pattern yet. I, I did order it. Um, it's an exclusive to them. Um, and the reason I, I had the best conversation with the shop, uh, owner, I, th I think it was the owner, um, and talking about Paul and Carlton. So I just, I, I love this community. Um, so I have that on the way. I'm probably going to order silk to do it with. Um, I think, cause I, I'm just going to order a Hank and do the silks for you because I haven't ever and it's a biggie so um that's gonna be January 1st I am starting December plans I will do my acrostic with hopefully things that I can finish or get close like put some more stitches in so that when I hit 2020 I'm gonna have more done on them um I'm gonna continue to try to finish my mania starts um and then Christmas I'm going to start Merry Xmas by Prairie Moon Guys, have you seen they're releasing again? They're on their, uh, they have a webpage. I'll link it below. Um, they're print rolls, PDF things. Um, so if there were things that you were coveting, you can get them now. Um, so Merry Xmas was like the pattern I bought that got me back into stitching nine years ago. So I think it's time to finally stitch it. So I'm going to get that one going on Christmas. Then on, I'm going to do a high tea start, which I haven't decided what the high tea start is going to be. And then January 1st is going to be the Quaker Friendship Sale. I had the high tea start figured out and I don't remember what it was. Caroline, thank you so much for high tea. I really enjoy it. I really do. Um, and it's going to, I think, be the way that I'm going to satisfy some of my start cravings next year. Uh, also, I've been thinking about Stitch Madness. 
I know this is not a 2020 like planning video, but um, I'm just going to keep talking. Um, Stitch Madness, I usually start 31 projects and I do 31 different designers and I do a new start every day and I only stitch on that project. And then um, the only way I stitch on something else that day is if I finish it. Um, I'm going to tweak it a bit this year because I'm not ready to start 31 things. I say that right now. I do not believe that I will be ready in March either to start 31 things. So I am comparing lists from 2018 and 2019 of the things I started on each day. And if I finish both of them, then it gets a new start this year. And if I finished one of them, then I work on the other one. And if I finish both, I haven't, or if I haven't finished either, I don't know which one I'm going to work on yet. I don't know if I'm going to give myself a free choice or if I'm going to make it random. Um, so that's going to be, and I think I have, I finished a lot from my 2018 Stitch Madnesses, but um, not many from 2019. I started a lot of biggies. So, uh, I, I think I have slots right now for three or four new starts. So that's my plan for March, um, I think. And I'm going to try to do new designers that haven't ever been started during Stitch Madness for me. So um, it will be people that I've never stitched or not that I've never stitched, but that I've never stitched during that month. Makes sense. Does in my head. <laughs> my head is a scary place to be, though, so I don't know. Um, that I think is all for today and I'm glad to be back and can't wait to see what you were stitching and um, let me know what your thoughts are about 2020, like what you are hoping to do and things like that. Um, what's my tagline? Keep baking those X's. I think that's it. It's been too long. Yeah, find your call and keep making those X's. I'll see you guys later. Bye, guys.